Kagen and its lesser form Khan are titles associated with the nomadic peoples of Inner Asia. The earliest use of Kagen is found in the Book of Song, a 5th century Chinese text as Chinese Ke Han. A chief of the Xianbei, distant relatives of the Mongols, was reportedly addressed as such in the 280s. It was later used as an imperial title by their cousins, the Roran, beginning in the 4th century. Kagen and Khan were then adopted by a wide range of nomadic Inner Asian peoples, from the Gwekturks to the Mongols to the Kazakhs. Little known is that the title Khan was once used by a sedentary people far from Inner Asia, right by the coast. They abandoned it for other titles many centuries ago. This is the story of the forgotten Khans of ancient Korea. It's not clear when and how the title Khan entered the Korean peninsula, but linguists such as Alexander Bovin have drawn a connection between Inner Asia's Khans and their Korean counterparts. The earliest record of these Korean Khans is found on a monument from the Chungsongli neighborhood of Pohang, a stele erected in the year 501 in the kingdom of Shilla. It refers to tribal chiefs throughout the kingdom as Kanji, pronounced perhaps Kansi at the time. Clearly cognate is Hangi, at the time pronounced Kangi or Hangi, which is attributed to leaders from a collection of city-states called Kaya by Nihon Shoki, an 8th century Japanese chronicle. Later Korean texts also corroborate the use of titles containing Khan in these territories. Samguk Yusa, a 13th century compilation of Korean myths, folk tales, and historical records, contains the foundation myth of Karak, initially the most powerful of all the Kaya city states. The story goes that a man named Suro founded Karak by unifying nine villages, each ruled by a Khan. Samguk Sagi, a 12th century Korean chronicle, tells the story of Hyokose, the founder of Shira. It is said that, upon ascending the throne, he took on the title of Kosogan. While the exact etymology of this title remains elusive, Samguk Sagi glosses it as king or noble person. It is reasonable to assume that taking on this title was meant to distinguish Hokkose from the countless other Khans within the Qinhan Confederacy, to which Shira initially belonged. The title of Kosogan was soon abandoned in Shira, however, and replaced by Isagum, at the time pronounced Niskum. We'll circle back to this title later. In 356, Kim Nemur was crowned king of Shira. He revived Khan as a royal title by branding himself a Maripgan. According to Pak Tae-che, Marip corresponds to modern Korean Maru, meaning summit. Thus, Maripgan could be interpreted as the Khan on top, not dissimilar to foreign titles like the King of Kings. By Nemur's time, Shilla had clearly emerged as the dominant state within the Qinhan Confederacy, and the adoption of this title appears to have reflected that political situation. In the 7th century, Shilla unified the Korean peninsula, forming the cultural and geopolitical basis for each subsequent Korean dynasty. In Mongolia, the title of Khagan remained in use up to 1924, but the modern Korean words for king are Wang and Imgum. The word Khan has completely disappeared, so what happened? In 503, King Chizung of Shilla first took on the title of Wang, borrowed from the Chinese word for king. The title Khan was henceforth no longer used by kings, but remained in use within the nobility. Of the 17 ranks given to Shilla's central aristocracy, the top 9 included the suffix Khan. Of the 11 ranks given to its regional aristocrats, the top 7 did so. Shilla collapsed in 935, and the title Khan was gradually devalued even further under subsequent dynasties, ultimately disappearing altogether. But what about Ingum, the native Korean equivalent to the Sino-Korean Wang? Imgum is the modern form of Middle Korean Nimgum, first attested in 1447. According to Yi Ki Moon and S. Robert Ramsey, the second syllable morpheme of this Middle Korean word was cognate to Kum, a Shilla word for king. This is the same Kum as in Niskum, which we briefly touched on earlier. 
and the first syllable of Middle Korean Nimgum, it has traditionally been proposed that Shilla Nisgum evolved directly into this form. However, the rising accent of Middle Korean Nim suggests its ancestral form was bisyllabic. Nihon Shoki may provide an alternate explanation. It mentions an old Korean word for lord, which Vovin reconstructs as Nyorim. He further postulates that an unattested cognate or dialectical variant, which he reconstructs as Nilim, is ancestral to Middle Korean Nim. Nim also survives in modern Korean as an independent honorific suffix, allowing for phrases like Imgum Nim or Tewang Nim. That was the story of the Khans of ancient Korea and the disappearance of their title. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to support the channel. I'd also greatly appreciate your extra support in becoming a channel member with the join button down below, which will give you access to perks such as early viewing of videos. Thank you for watching.